best of TV Burp. A look back at my favourite moments from previous series. Giant toilet roll cover on Coronation Street. <laughs> Jeremy Cashman shows us his legs on the Victorians. Nice legs. <laughs> and after punch up with Danny, Louis Walsh winds up in casualty. <laughs> Mm. And poor old Ruth went out. Yeah, but just because she was voted off, she wasn't downhearted, no, because she's got plans. You have been some battler, haven't you? I have fought with all my heart and with everything I had. And this doesn't end here. This is the beginning of my dream. This is the beginning. Yeah, it's the beginning, and Dermot was most encouraging. Well, it's all over for Ruth. <laughs> Say, I did enjoy Eoghan Quigg's performance. As you know, I'm backing Eoghan to win, but I very nearly didn't vote for him last week as he was almost forgetting to do his voting face. You know, that face that he does to make you vote for him. Uh, he has sung high school musical if you want his life to A plus. The big news last week was Britney Spears. The problem was we had to wait all blooming night. I can't believe I'm about to say it. Everyone's talking about it. Pinch yourselves because it's true. <laughs> Most talked about pop star on the planet going to be here right on this very stage. It's Britney Spears! <laughs> Hooray! And you lucky pops have got a ticket to the hottest show in town. Pinch yourselves because Britney Spears is here! Hooray! To the X Factor, the only place to see Miley Cyrus and that sensational X Factor exclusive, Britney Spears! <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> first visit here for five years, we've got the exclusive one and only Britney Spears is here! Get on with it! <laughs> Welcome to the most exciting X Factor result ever. The incredible Britney Spears performs live on this stage. <laughs> Tonight, the excitement is off the scale in just a few short moments. Well, it's going to be mayhem here for the return of Britney Spears. <laughs> she's here, she's live, she's in the flesh. She's a global superstar, and we are thrilled to have her here. It's the one and only Britney Spears. <laughs> yeah, she got the classic X Factor style build up as well, but I think they missed a few bits out of that. Eight number one singles, five platinum albums. She didn't mentor the other acts like on previous weeks. She mimes when she sings. Worse dancer than John Sargent, cause her pants are too tight. She shaved all her hair off. Taken out of her own home on a stretcher. Like that, if you missed it. Mm. Which brings us to our occasional item, the many faces of Louis Walsh, number five, sad. The many faces of Louis Walsh. Now, two weeks ago, we showed how Lisa from Emmerdale had mastered the art of breathing the Emmerdale theme tune. I mean it, Lisa, the stain. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, 
Well, it was only a matter of time before someone on Corrie learned to do the same thing. He thought this was it, him and Becky. He thinks the sun shines out of her. <laughs> it's, it's a bit more... It's a bit more difficult, that one, but I'll give it a go. <laughs> How old is David Attenborough now? 200 years ago, a man was born who was to explain this astonishing diversity of life. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear David. No, of course not. He's not 200 years old. No, he's talking, of course, of Charles Darwin, the bloke who came up with the idea of evolution. And what Darwin needed for his theory was evidence. Ideally, some sort of missing link. Yeah, I've got it here. <laughs> I am the missing link. Goodbye. <laughs> he found his evidence, of course, on the Galapagos Islands in the shapes of the various finches' beaks. Yeah, finches with beaks that have adapted over the years to suit a particular purpose. Well, that was 200 years ago, of course, and the things have evolved even further than that. I've got some of the modern-day finches here. Uh, so, for instance, this finch, uh, whose beak has become specially adapted to remove the tops of beer bottles. <laughs> so it can feast on the tasty fluid within. <laughs> then there's this particular finch whose beak has evolved so it's able to release pound coins from shopping toys. <laughs> then there's this finch who's developed um, a beak in the shape of a, a USB memory stick. <laughs> so it's able to back up its files. <laughs> but of course, the most advanced finch beak of all is uh, this found on the Swiss Army finch. <laughs> It's got a penknife, screwdriver, scissors and a toothpick here. Yeah. You for getting things out of horses' hooves. But, <laughs> of course, Darwin would be amazed at what they're able to do these days. It looked to me like Dave had been exposed to something that made him luminous too. It began in the sea some 3,000 million years ago. <laughs> He's gone green! <laughs> And every now and then he does go green, but it only tends to happen when he's angry. Mm. And you wouldn't like him when he's angry. My finch! I dropped my finch! It makes me so angry! my specially adapted finch. <laughs> that showed him. <laughs> of course, it's not just finches that have adapted to a specific habitat. Vegetation. Yeah, two tortoises which have evolved very different shells. Now, I like the rounded shell tortoise, and I like the tortoise with a shell that has a peak to enable it to reach up for higher vegetation, but which is better? There's only one way to find out. To the best of TV burp, Val falls in love with a balloon on Emmerdale. Oh, we discover the true identity of Batman on Lark Rice to Candleford. 
I'm sorry I'm late, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> and man looks older than he is on Louis Theroux. Are you Malevin? I'm... I'm Malevin. Yeah, nice to meet you. How's it going? It was Michael Aspel's last Antiques Roadshow. Shame. Yeah, he's retired from the show, but not from show business, although Hugh Scully gave it up and sank without a trace. <laughs> <laughs> what I always loved about the Antiques Roadshow was the heartwarming family stories behind the antiques. This is a nice photograph. Is this elegant lady a member of your family? No, she killed my mother's dog. <laughs> sure she had her reasons. <laughs> Sunday's show was turned into a wonderful farewell to Michael, complete with some fascinating Michael facts. Michael has clocked up more than 50,000 roadshow miles. He's met close to 40,000 people and signed almost as many autographs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's just the start of it. It, it does go on. <laughs> Over the course of making Antiques Roadshow, Michael has got drunk in over 200 <laughs> different travel lodges and for a month lived solely on Ginster's Pork Pies. <laughs> Michael likes to steal the antiques worth the most money and has 99% positive feedback on eBay. <laughs> sure, all right, we don't... I don't need any more of that, I don't think. Yeah. Which brings us to our TV highlight of the week. Watch this. There was surprising news this week that pint-sized rock star Prince was shacking up with Phil and Susie on Albert Square. Phil. I can't find Prince. Well, he's, uh, he's probably asleep now. A shoe or something. No, he's not in the house. He must have gone out. Can't have gone far, can he? His legs ain't long enough. <laughs> yeah, he's small Prince. Yeah, he's been staying with Phil and Susie, but there's a rota in showbiz circles for looking after Prince. It's my turn <laughs> at the weekends. <laughs> All right, Prince. What? You want to go to the toilet? You know where the toilet is, don't you? What, what are you frightened about, you silly man? <laughs> There's a curly whirly. <laughs> Not now. After you've been to the loo, then you can eat it during X Factor results. <laughs> you got your key, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a pain, but I've got him till Sunday morning, then I have to drop him around Dale Winton's. <laughs> Back to EastEnders, and Phil and Susie are an item. Yeah, that's not to say Phil hasn't strayed. No, he had a bit of the naughty with, uh... Oh, sorry, I... <laughs> Shirley. Yes, Shirley. Why don't you just give him another chance? I already have. What do you mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? Me and Phil. The other night. You commute. That's one word for it. I knew it. He still loves you. He couldn't even look at me afterwards. Or before. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Shirley turned her back on a trip round Europe with Bobby Davro to stay with her old mate Heather. So, how did Bobby Davro cope with Shirley's betrayal? Not well. I'm not feeling sorry for myself. Just remember, son, there's nothing worse than what ifs. I mean, what if I'd listened to your mum more? What if I'd spent more time with you and your brother instead of going down that stupid betting office? What if I hadn't walked out on Haley's man? And what if... Bobby Davro rocks with laughter hadn't been cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> As I say, she decided to stay with her old mate, Eva. You know what, Ev? Just the once, I'd like to see me through your eyes. Hmm. What would it be like looking through the eyes of Heather? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's me, your old mate Shirley. Well, wait a minute. What you, what, oh, that's Princess Curly Whirly. <laughs> Take on Princess Curly Whirly. Isn't it weird when you start looking like your icebergs, though, eh? BBC Two 
Zoo's Natural World, White Falk and White Wolf, or It'll Be All White on the Night, which followed the fortunes of a pack of white wolves. And one of the younger ones was still very playful. She devised a game. The young female spends much of her time playing. <laughs> yeah, it's a good game, that. I might try it. That's <laughs> 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 oh, fun. It was cold up there, naturally, and there was a hare that hadn't seemed to have got used to the freezing cold ground. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Stop me! Put this on! Then, of course, came a pair of white falcons, and one had learned that junior here of the football. Their larger size is now proving difficult for the smaller male falcon. Which brings us to the TV Burp Award for Best Heart Attack Acting in a Soap. <laughs> and the winner is... Mike, for his heart attack on Coronation Street. There's no scrim still on your bike. No, she's off today. It's your sister instead. <laughs> oh. Sadly, Mike can't be with us because uh, <laughs> he had a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> Dancing on Ice is back! <laughs> you know what my favourite bit is? The waving at the start. Nice to get a good bit of waving in. <laughs> Nice to have a wave. <laughs> but the celebrity who really seems to have got the hang of it is Mr. Todd Carty, showing a grace almost unheard of in a man of his size and age. He's almost at one with the ice. Well, let's go backstage and find out. glasses made this week. Yeah, I hope you like them. Mm. I had them made because uh, I saw a lady on casualty wearing them. <laughs> <laughs> what is she doing? Yeah. 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 Can I get those? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it's casualty, and if you're after a pizza in the Holby area, never order the American hot. Pizza. <laughs> you put extra chilies on that. <laughs> what I do enjoy about casualty are the occasional special guest appearances, and this week saw a bumper harvest. First, Penfold off Danger Mouse. <laughs> Then Eric Clapton on a drip. Well, there must be someone else. If it was, do you think I <laughs> Well, let's hope he's feeling better because he's here to sing us out with the theme from Casualty. It's Eric Clapton! <laughs>
see you on the moon. That's all from us here. See you next week. So many good bits. If you missed any of Harry Hill's TV burp, catch the comedy again on the ITV player. It's on BT Vision or Virgin Media, digital TV on demand, or of course via the website at itv.com slash ITV player. Next, who's brave enough to push the button? Anton Decker here with a big surprise in just a second. <laughs>